Good afternoon. I'm Janet Moon, the Chief of Police here at Peachtree City Police Department. Today I'm going to be joined by Assistant Chief Matt Myers. I want to extend my thanks to the detectives and the officers of Peachtree City for their tireless work over the last 31 hours to bring a resolution to this homicide. Peachtree City would also like to thank the Fayette County Sheriff's Office for supplying assistance and tactical support and execution of arrest and search warrants related to this case. The Gainesville Police Department and Hall County Sheriff's Office for similar support in the execution of a search warrant in their jurisdictions. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation for supplying crime scene resources and the Fayette County District Attorney's Office for legal support. I am now going to turn the press conference over to Assistant Chief Matt Myers. Thank you, Chief. I'm going to give a brief statement and then I'll take uh, follow-up questions after that. So yesterday, February 21st, at about 6 o'clock in the morning, Peachtree City police officers responded to an apartment on Peachtree Station Circle, uh, that's the Greens at Braylon, regarding a medical call. A 15-year-old female had been found deceased in her bedroom by her mother. A final determination on cause of death is pending review by the medical examiner, but an injury to the victim's head appears consistent with a gunshot wound. That is, again, however, pending final determination from the medical examiner's office. Detectives quickly identified three suspects, all of whom were acquaintances with the victim. Yesterday afternoon, uh, one of the suspects was arrested following a foot chase uh, with the Fayette County Sheriff's Office. Another suspect was arrested from the same residence in Fayetteville, or he was detained from the same residence in Fayetteville. Uh, by early this morning, the third suspect uh, was also in custody. All three of these suspects are now at the Fayette County Jail. All three of them are also charged with murder. I'll take any questions. Can you talk a little bit about the relationship between um, the victim and the uh, suspects in this case? How did they get to the home? Were they invited there? Any background that you have on that? Uh, I can't comment too much on the exact you know, the nature of the relationship between them. We do know that they are acquaintances. They have known each other for at least some period of time. Uh, and this was not a, a random act. They knew whose apartment they were at, and it was in some way related to matters between these individuals. Um, we're still investigating an exact motive and the exact role of each person uh, involved. So we'll reveal more details on that um, if and when they become available. This obviously happened overnight, uh, at some point over a night period when the mom uh, came and found her at 6 a.m. Uh, did anyone report any gunshots in the apartment complex uh, before that or over the night overnight period? We did not have any complaints of a gunshot. So, so the cause of death is still under investigation, but in the use, as you um, state here, that there was a wound, right, to um, her head. Can you describe that at all? Uh, there was an injury to her head that appears consistent with a gunshot wound, but it's not proper to comment on that until the medical examiner has completed uh, their examination of the body. Can you know she was still in school? Uh, the, vic the victim, Madison, was a student at Whitewater High School here in Fayette County. Can you, um, pronounce, her, oh, sorry, can you pronounce her full name for us? I am afraid I may mispronounce her last name, so yeah, it's been provided to you in writing. I would um, defer to your interpretation or follow-up Can you later. pronounce the names of the suspects? I will give you my, my best. Uh, Justice Smith, uh, who is 18 years old and a resident of Fayetteville. Jacobian Brown, a resident of Fayetteville, who is also 18 years old. And Yeshua Mathis, 18 years old of Fayetteville. Have you had any past runnings with these particular suspects before? I don't know the answer to that right off the top of my head. Do you have a sense of a motive? Uh, we can't really comment on the motive at this time. That's something we're still investigating. Uh, again, we do know that they were acquainted and this was not a random incident, but the exact nature of the motive and the role of each person involved is still something we're investigating. Can you take us through the timeline in detail of how you were able to identify these three teams as the suspects and uh, how they were each found? Uh, the timeline will be very loose, but um, I'll say from a general perspective, uh, at the scene, very early after the report, we had identified uh, three potential suspects. They were identified using a variety of sources and methods to come up with their identification. Um, as we're continuing the investigation, I'm not going to comment extensively on the sources or methods of the, their identification, but I can say that by early yesterday afternoon, two of them were detained. That was in the approximately noon to one time frame. I, I'm not exact on that because that's from memory. 
Uh, they were detained, both, two of them were detained in Fayetteville. That included Jacobian Brown and Justice Smith. Uh, by later in the evening, an arrest warrant had been issued for Yeshua Mathis, and we were seeking uh, to get him into custody. During the course of that, overnight, we executed a search warrant at a home in Gainesville, Georgia, and seized a vehicle that we believe belongs to Yeshua. Uh, but he was later located early this morning at a residence in Fayetteville, where he was taken into custody uh, with assistance from the Fayette County Sheriff's Office. Do you know why his vehicle was in Gainesville? Um, he, he has relatives or acquaintances up there in Gainesville where the vehicle was located. Were they living with their parents? When you talk about these homes, such as the ones in Fayetteville, and were, they, were they living alone or were they living with their parents? I, I know at least one of them is living with their parent, but I, I don't know enough on the status of the other two to comment intelligently on that. Now we have all their ages of 18. Are they also still in high school as well? I, I don't know the answer to that. Really? Uh, I'm not going to comment on weapon recovery at this point because pending some um, forensic evaluation and the determ determination from the medical examiner about the cause of death, uh, we may or may not have anything in custody that's related to a the, the injury done to the victim. You've got the victim's cell phone. Are you guys planning to go through that? We do have the victim's cell phone. And what are your plans with that? Uh, in the course of any investigation, that's something that if we can access a cell phone, we want to you know, give consideration to what we find in there. So that's a pretty just routine for any investigation if it's applicable. What have uh, you been able to, to glean from the family and talking to them? I'm sure the, the mother's distraught with your 911 calls saying that it looked like uh, somebody had broken into the bedroom window. Are you able to confirm that? And just can you tell us how the family's feeling right now? Uh, the family, obviously, understandably, is, is very distraught. Um, I don't know how much more I could really comment beyond that because I really could never do justice to what they, they must be going through. Uh, in, in terms of what happened after the scene, um, you're more or less correct about the 911 call. I, I can tell you that there was a lot of speculation uh, about the method of entry and that did not come from the police department. I believe some people in the community saw a bag over a window in the apartment building and speculated that there was a broken window. However, that window was taken by the Georgia Bureau of Investigation's crime scene unit in its entirety for processing of evidence. And that's why there was a, a bag covering a window. Um, uh, I'm not going to get too much into details on exactly um, what arrangements were in place when these people or some combination of them made entry into the apartment, uh, as that's something we're still investigating. So you don't know if the victim might have left? them into the apartment at some point during before 6 a.m.? That, that's possible. There's a ring camera at the door uh, to that apartment. Have you guys uh, gotten that video? Are you going through that as well? We have reviewed all of the video available, uh, but I can't discuss the exact findings of each video at this point. Are there any other suspects? We have no further suspects outstanding. You mentioned uh, here in your release that more charges could come. Uh, what other charges are potentially on the table? On uh, if I had a firm answer to that, we probably would have gone ahead and issue them, but uh, we are still sorting through all of the evidence, all of the interviews, and making final determinations, which is pretty routine in this type of case. Uh, we want to go ahead and issue the most important charge uh, to detain the, the suspects and then continue our investigation and determine what charges were applicable and to which parties that were applicable. How What's rare is a crime like this in Peachtree City? One of the things your chief was mentioning earlier was talking about, you know, golf court carts and things like that and, you know, minor infractions. Uh, a murder situation like this is, is something that you don't hear about a lot here. So what is your reaction to that? Uh, so fortunately in Peachtree City, we do have a very low rate of violent crime. Uh, this is the first murder reported in Peachtree City this year. Uh, the last one of these we investigated was mid last year sometime around May. So uh, fortunately we don't have this type of crime in Peachtree City very often, but crime in and of itself is an issue in all communities. So it's something we continue to be vigilant about and always are aware of the fact that violent crime can happen anywhere. Do you know if any of these suspects are implicated or accused in other crimes? I, I don't know enough to comment on that. Uh, and then what's your message to not only family in this case, um, but neighbors in that uh, apartment complex? I don't know there's anything I can ever say to a family that would uh, make this situation any better other than um, we have worked tirelessly. Many of my detectives and officers work for about 30 hours straight trying to do what we can to bring justice to that and I hope in some small portion that may bring them a degree of peace. Uh, for the other people in the community I just want to reiterate that this was not a random act. 
We do have the suspects in custody, and we don't have any reason to believe there is an ongoing threat to anyone else in the community in connection with this crime. Anything we left out? Anything of note that you wanted to add? Uh, no, sir, not that I can think of right now. Any other questions? All right. Thank you all for coming.